Now, if you, uh, if, if you got 10% on really anything, would you be pleased? Depends. Uh, history final, not great. Uh, what's another one? I don't know. Um, 10%, uh, only 10% growth in a thing that you were hoping would, you know, that, that's not too bad. Um, but 10% coming back to say thank you, that's not a great percentage. 10% are feeling uh, true gratitude. Jesus asked them. Uh, I'm sorry, it's the next one. One more. We're not all 10 cleansed? It's right there. You're good. Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Thank you notes. Thank you notes are hard. You got to have the stationary. You have to write occasionally to have deep penmanship. You have to have the person's address. You have to uh, have a stamp, which is a nightmare in my world. Um, I will. I'm. I'm a um, weird kind of lazy where I do more work. I'd rather not look for a stamp, so I'll drive downtown and just hand it to them. I mean, that's it's uh, real silly. Um, what I do on certain occasions, but to have all that stuff together, to then put and then you sit down and you write your 100 thank you notes for whatever that event was. It's a hard thing to do. One person did it. He says, we're not all ten cleansed. We're the other nine. He said, go and show yourselves to the priests earlier. And in, uh, I've never seen this before until I looked at some of the um, uh, new scholarly work on this. They suggest if it's priests, then there's two sets. There's the, the nine who would go to the priest, and then there's the one Samaritan who would go to his. He said, go and show yourself to the priests. You would probably go that way, and the other nine would go that way. Well, the nine scattered and never came back. Who do you think the Samaritan showed himself to? Jesus. His priest. You're now my priest. The one who cared. The one who reached out to me. The one who healed me. So the Samaritan ends up choosing Jesus as his priest, modeling what true worship would be one who had not interacted possibly, if he's Samaritan, with any sort of uh, religion that has to do with what Jesus is talking about. And yet he chooses Jesus. Now gratitude is a way of living that never lets go of our dependence on God's grace. If we feel I am completely and wholly dependent on God's grace, then it's easier for us to be thankful. It's easy for us to not compare ourselves against one another because you recognize that we've all fallen short. If you feel true gratitude to God, you say, oh, I'm so thankful that God loves me in this place, that God encourages me and wants me to do better. The opposite of gratitude would be living in the illusion that you are independent of God's grace. What do I, I'm fine. What do I need it for? This Samaritan is living, he, he is showing true gratitude. I know that I need help, and you have helped me, and I'm saying thank you. Now, the painful thing is, where did the other nine go? Well, this is probably speculation. But what do you want to bet that they wanted to be part of society? They wanted to go to the fun parties. They wanted to go to the fun banquets. They wanted to be part of their friends who had done what to them in the past, however long it's been. I'm talking to you. And I don't want you around here. And when healed, what do they want to do? run right back to those people who had denied them this entire time and just be part of the group again. Not one of us has to think very hard about wanting to be part of a group, about wanting to be included, about the, you know, if it's only been two or three times in which you've been excluded, I bet it's really clear in your mind. And so they run back to those people who had excluded them rather than the one who helped them. They run back to society and want to be part of just any, any sort of social respectability is what they want to sprint to. Now, your final fill-in-the-blank is, 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 is a great one. 
and a troubling one for the people who hear this story. The troubling part of the story is that the hero is a Samaritan. Jewish people hated Samaritans. And this, uh, this comes from their different worship practices. And there's nothing better than hating somebody that's different than you, right? We were orange, you were yellow, we hate you. Um, we, uh, we believe in uh, a certain type of politics, you believe in a certain type of politics, we hate you. Um, I don't know, we live here, you live there, we hate you. It's easy. It's, it's the easiest thing to do, to hate the person you don't understand that's separated from you. They say the Samaritans have it all wrong. They don't know what they're doing. But this Samaritan knows how to love a neighbor, knows how to honor God, knows how to show true gratitude. Now let's look at one more picture. This is two chapters after the Good Samaritan, the story in, uh, in Luke. And in the Good Samaritan, Jesus tells a story to a group of people where uh, a man is laying, dying after being assaulted on the road. And their hero, the priest, who would tell them exactly what to do in that situation, what does he do? He swings wide around the man. Well, if the priest swings wide around him, maybe, maybe his associate minister, maybe, you know what, he's, he's, he's young and he's vibrant and he wants to do ministry and Maybe he'll do it. He swings wide too. Who stops? Samaritan. The Samaritan stops and helps this man. Jesus tells that to tells that story to a people who hate Samaritans. Um, I, when I was doing this uh, in a Bible study in uh, downtown, I was trying to think of a good example of this. And it, I don't I don't know if this is a good example of this, but if if you told this story, um, you know to 200, 100 years ago down on the peninsula and you said, and the, the two southerners walked past the man and the Yankee stopped and helped him. But what? What happened? No, there's no way. There's no way that good southerners would, would walk wide around this person and not show great hospitality. And the Yankee would help. That's insane. I don't know if that's a good example, but it, you know, it's something. I, I try to help you. Um, Samaritan helps him. Two chapters later, ten people are healed. Who's the one that comes back? The Samaritan. The people who know nothing, who are completely useless and live on the other side of that border, who cares about them, are the only people that are, one, helping people in desperate need, and two, recognizing how much God needs them and appreciating it. That's got to sting. That's got to really hurt, but you know what? It's good. Sometimes it's good to realize that you have lost sight of what you're supposed to be doing. Because it, ha it happens to us. It happens to us in our family. It happens to us in the workplace. It happens to us everywhere. We lose sight of what we're supposed to do. And all of a sudden, we're jolted back, if we're lucky. Now, what is our model for gratitude and response? Right there. I have been in desperate trouble before and have needed help, says a Samaritan. And I see a person who is in desperate trouble and needs help. I appreciate how much God loves me and helps me. I'm going to help this person. There's our model. So, to, um, to hear a story that may not, uh, on, on a first read, may not um, make any sense to us, may not seem real to us, it's actually quite real. We've all been helped. The question is, did we recognize God's face in that help? And have we sought out to say, okay, how am I going to do this? How am I going to help someone going forward from here? We're not hard on ourselves because we're broken. We're not hard on ourselves because we need help. We recognize God loves us this much. And we will share that love with whomever we meet, whenever we meet them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.